it's Sunday again, and this is Video Games and Consoles from The Loft. <laughs> Welcome to part 3, and today I'm looking at two different controllers from two different consoles. One's a massive collectible from a great franchise, and the other a wireless controller system from Nintendo. And that's what I'm going to kick off with, which is the Nintendo double player wireless head-to-head -head system for the NES. So this controller set was released in 1988 for the NES by Acclaim, who up to 2004 were still around. The claim were video game developers and publishers in America who released many, many games for many, many consoles, as I'm sure most of us are, are aware of, as they released some of the biggest titles, including The Simpsons. Let's take a closer look. So as you've seen already, I've still got the box, which is still in great condition, and your nice cheesy 1980s photo on the front. Inside the box, I've still got the original instructions and warranty card, which I don't think will come in much handy as this system is 21 years old. Inside the system itself, in the box, you've got the two wireless controllers and the infrared receiver. Now the infrared receiver has a dual cord, which plugs into both of your NES controller ports, obviously for the ability for two player. In fact, I'll just show you that now. So if I just grab an NES system, well the problem about this system, about the actual setup, was that you had to put your NES system on top of your TV, then you had to put your receiver on the top of your NES, plus plug both of the cords into your NES system and expect your receiver to just sit there, which it never ever would, or twist off, fall off. So if you've got some blue tack, get some blue tack because on the bottom of this, it doesn't have any grips. So let's move on to the controllers. Now these controllers are rather large and twice the size of any normal NES controller. If I bring one up here, and you can see the comparison in the size and also thickness. And they will also be twice as heavier once you've added four AAA batteries and two slide in either end of the controller by sliding up this little slot and then posting your batteries inside and sliding the lid back on the top. Now on the actual controller itself there's not much difference between a normal NES controller they just have a few extra buttons which actually come in quite handy. Uh, you've got your normal cursor, uh, your start and select at the bottom here also you have your A and B buttons which have extra additions which have the rapid turbo fire buttons which can be activated by just pressing them on. Also you have a slow motion button on here and your one and two player switch depending on what game you're playing and if you want a head to head battle. Now I'm not going to show you any footage of these being used today, but what I will say is that when I do another NES game review for video games and consoles, I'll use these. Now these were totally unique. I don't even think there were many wireless controller systems out at the time, so I think these were absolutely brilliant for their age, especially as these were from 1988. The other good thing about these is that you could use them up to 30 feet away, that's 9 metres, that's further than a Wii remote today that we use. So these were absolutely brilliant. So if you fancy collecting one of these, definitely get yourself one because these are good fun. Now I've obviously saved the best till last because this is awesome. This is one of my most favourite collectibles in all of my collection. And that's this. The Resident Evil 4 Chainsaw for the GameCube controller. Well in 2005, Nubitech, a third party manufacturer, designed two chainsaws. One for the PlayStation 2 and one for the GameCube. Both were modelled and created on the chainsaw used by the Chainsaw Man from the game. Both totally functional for gameplay use as well. 
Now each chainsaw has been packaged in these amazing display cases with all these different viewing windows to give you an extra look at the chainsaw from all different sorts of angles. Each of the chainsaw blades has original artwork blood splattering on them so there are no two chainsaws the same. Every single one of these they made are absolutely different. Also each chainsaw has a unique serial number as well but I have no idea what mine is as I haven't even opened mine up and I've had this for years. Each of the chainsaws has a display stand inside the box as well which is like a rock sort of theme to give it that extra cold look. The controls are just based on the GameCube controller virtually the same in the same positions. The only difference being with this controller is you don't hold it like a regular controller, you hold it like a proper chainsaw, which is actually pretty menacing, but really cool at the same time. I just think this is absolutely brilliant and one of the best collectibles that Resident Evil have ever, ever made. Now if you're a bigger fan of PlayStation than you are of Nintendo, then you'll probably want to pick up the PlayStation 2 chainsaw controller, which is actually slightly different. Uh, this one is yellow, whereas theirs is red. It also has a totally different display case with more open panelling at the front and sides for a more clear view in. It also has an extra bonus, which is a chainsaw pull cord to give you that extra effect as if you're going to start the chainsaw up which I think is pretty cool, but it's a shame this one doesn't have it, but I'm sticking with the GameCube one because I think this is just absolutely fantastic. Now in 2005, I paid £60 for this, and I know you can pay around the same sort of price today, maybe even a little bit more dearer. In America, I've seen these on Amazon.com from anything from $50 to $179, but if you hunt around, I'm sure you can find them a lot cheaper. If I go back to the head-to-head -head system, the wireless controllers from earlier, I paid £15 here in the UK for this, and I reckon you could probably pick these up in the US from anything from $10 to $20 to $30. Now, I hope you've enjoyed both of these controller finds, because they're definitely going down in history as some of the greatest. And I hope you enjoy me next week for, for part four, where I'll be uh, reviewing the first games console that I ever played on, thanks to my Nan and Gramps. And I hope you've enjoyed today, and I'll see you next week for more video games and consoles from The Loft.